want to move on now and talk about uh, Scotland because, of course, Scottish independence is something that never goes well. Of course, Nicola Sturgeon always keen to talk about uh, the next election being a de facto referendum on Scottish independence. But it seems things are not going quite so well up in Scotland for Nicola Sturgeon. There's a new poll out by Lord Ashcroft which reveals a massive gulf between the Scottish government and their voters on independence and indeed on gender reform. And, and this is really quite an extraordinary uh, poll, I think, because obviously the SNP has had 15 years of dominance and it also sort of then uh, counters the argument uh, about uh, the direction that the Scottish government is taking, particularly the legal challenge to the UK government's gender recognition reform bill and also about constitutional change, the fact that obviously Nicola Sturgeon is determined to make the next election a de facto uh, vote on Scottish independence. So uh, it is extraordinary because uh, the polling of more than 2,100 people by Lord, Lord Ashcroft has found that a large majority, including many sceptical SNP supporters, are not behind the moves that she is currently making. And when you look at the sample that they took, only one in five, 20% or 21%, agreed that the next general election should be taken as a de facto independence referendum. 67% agreed that people vote at elections for lots of different reasons. And only 44% of those who voted SNP in the 2019 general election were in favour of using the next one as an independent uh, referendum, de facto independent referendum. And, and what I find really interesting is when you look at what people in Scotland are worried about, they say number one, health, number two, the NHS, and number three, the cost of living. When you ask the Scottish government, they say something completely different. They say number one is Scottish independence, number two is gender recognition, and number three is trans rights. So is the Scottish government well out of step with what the Scottish people are thinking? Joining me now is Mark Devlin, founder of The Majority, which is a voice for Scotland's anti-nationalist majority. Good morning to you. Yeah, good morning. How are you today? I'm very, I'm very well, thank you. I mean, it's an extraordinary poll, isn't it? I'm not entirely surprised. Well, it isn't, it isn't particularly a big surprise. Nicola Sturgeon has been increasingly out of touch over the past, you know, four for quite some time now and she just does not uh, have any understanding of what ordinary voters in Scotland what the priorities are I mean, just in terms of that, and I, I, you know, I obviously said that in the intro, the, the, but I find it extraordinary that Sturgeon and her lot think that independence is the one, then gender recognition, then trans rights, whereas actually real people say it's healthy NHS, cost of living and the economy. They, yeah, they couldn't be more different. Yeah, that's the same. Well, it's the same for everyone in the UK. And that's the thing. She's put these, uh, what she considers her priorities above the priorities of just anyone really who's out, uh, anyone at all. For example, we all want help with our cost of living crisis well we don't necessarily all want help but we want our government at least to be addressing those issues help with the cost of living crisis failing nhs and um, uh, also with the energy bills and so on but nicola sturgeon is determined to push ahead with uh, things that are not the priorities for example a recent poll said that only the, an, an independence referendum was only a priority for nine percent of scott scots so we have this situation where she's very vocal in all these kind of uh, trying to get these policies and, and project these ideas out, but the Scots aren't really listening to her anymore. I mean, it is extraordinary, actually. In terms of uh, fighting the gender recognition bill, obviously uh, uh, the UK government imposed a Section 35 on this, which is, which is highly unusual, and, of course, that has caused huge waves. Do you think Nicola Sturgeon is now so blinkered that she can't see the bigger picture? Well, I don't think she could ever really see the bigger picture. I mean, she's a, a one-note politician. She's really very much in her own bubble. She wants to do her own thing. She does. She's got. Um, she doesn't really have a cabinet-type system. It's more very presidential. She makes all the decisions. So it's it's no surprise that at a certain point that she runs out of road. You know, she's like that. Um, you know, the coyote in those old cartoons, and she's just running off the cliff. And it doesn't matter how fast her little feet go. Um, she's on the way down. 
What I find increasingly interesting also is the movement on Scottish independence. Uh, if you listen to Nicola Sturgeon, she would assure you that the vast majority in Scotland are pro-independence. But these figures say quite the contrary. If a, rent, a referendum was to be held tomorrow, the yes side would lose. Uh, this is according to the poll, saying only 44% now support independence. Well, you say it's forty-four percent once undecideds are taken out. It's Indeed, thirty-seven percent uh, when uh, we we include the undecideds, and generally the undecideds will break for the status quo, which is no. So basically, she this is a real a, a massive decline for her. She's been concentrating on these three issues: independence down to thirty percent, gender reform only fifty percent of Scots support, and a de facto referendum that only one in five Scots support. These are not the problem of the Scottish people. The Scottish people, as I said, want her to actually be doing her what we call the day job and get on with things that we actually care about. Remember, she is not a, 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 the leader of a country. She's the leader of a devolved administration inside the UK. And people want her to do the basics of that job. And where does she go from here? Is the road running out? Yeah, the road has run out. She's, as I said, she's in midair and she's her feet are scrambling, but she's not getting anywhere at all, and she's just headed on the way down. And it's she's got this uh, party conference coming up in the middle of March. At that point, she has to go in front of her members and say. Oh, hey, we're going to go for this de facto referendum, but even her own, M uh, own MPs are, are very sceptical about it. As we say, one, only one in five support uh, of the public support it. It's just, uh, it's just what a typical. Uh, it's just she's. It's just increasingly bizarre schemes to try and get, keep the kicking the can down the road, and there's no, there's no, there's no more road left. And what's your sense about uh, the, how uh, the SNP reacts to this? Are they fragmenting around her? Yeah, well, obviously, uh, any party that can't achieve its main goal is all going to fragment anyway, right? But if, especially now, because it's because she can't get the main goal, and now that the party is seeing her as the person that's stopping them from getting independence, the party is saying, and her, her ex-supporters now, or disillusioned supporters, saying, why are you focusing on gender reform when you should be focusing on independence? But the reality of it is she can't actually focus on independence because there's no road there. So she, that's why they've come up with these other other laws and so on and schemes and, you know, bizarre laws, really, just to uh, keep going and kick the can down the road, as you say. So what do you think will happen at conference, then? Oh, I think it's going to be very, 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 very difficult for her. I think my personal feeling is that that's going to be, uh, that could be the trigger for her to actually resign and say, I've had enough of this and move on. But, I mean, she has to stand up there and defend the indefensible. She has to defend her gender uh, bill, which is, you know, is basically has put rapists into uh, female prisons. I mean, that's a non-starter straight away. And then she has to defend a de facto referendum, which nobody supports. And, and everyone's confused about it. So it's no, there's no chance. There's, I think it's very, very tough to stand up in that type of situation. I think up until now, she's been able, she's been kind of uh, bulletproof. But now the cracks have shown, and uh, uh, that means that the, the, uh, the, the, the only increase in intensity and virulence, as it were, against her. Mark, very good to talk to you. That's Mark Devlin, founder of the majority, a voice for Scotland's anti-nationalist uh, majority.